Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Bangladesh shifts second group of Rohingya refugees to Ireland, US House of Representatives approves $2,000 stimulus check, Ugandan presidential candidate Bobby Wine claims attack on rally, and finally we take a look at the year of protests against racism. In our first story, the Bangladesh government is relocating a second group of Rohingya refugees to a cyclone and flood-prone island. Six Navy ships carrying nearly 1,800 refugees left for the Bhashanchar Island in the Bay of Bengal on December 29th. The relocation process started on December 4th when approximately 1,600 refugees were moved to the island. The Bangladesh government has claimed that the Rohingya refugees are moving to the island voluntarily and that arrangements for housing and flood prevention have been made. However, refugees and humanitarian workers have stated that government officials have also used intimidation and cash incentives to coerce Rohingyas to move to the island. Several human rights groups have condemned the relocation to the isolated island, which is approximately 40 miles away from the mainland. The UN also released a statement saying that it had not been involved in the preparation for the move and the identification of refugees. It has also not been able to perform safety and technical assessments of the island. Moreover, journalists and international agencies will also reportedly not have access to the island without prior permission. Nearly 1.1 million Rohingya refugees have been living in crowded camps in Cox's Bazar after escaping the genocide in Myanmar in 2017. The Bangladesh government is planning to relocate at least 100,000 refugees to Bhashanchar. In our next story, the US House of Representatives has approved a $2,000 stimulus payment for people affected by the pandemic. The measure was approved with a majority vote of 275 to 134 on December 28th. The House also voted to override President Donald Trump's veto of the National Defense Authorization Act by a majority of 322 to 87. The stimulus measure of the defense bill will now head to the Republican-led Senate for a vote. The Republican Party had opposed all efforts to increase stimulus payment throughout the negotiation process for the pandemic relief bill. The bill had been widely criticized for allowing only $600 in stimulus payments to vulnerable groups who have been struggling for months. President Trump also unexpectedly broke with the Republican Party's stance to demand that Congress approve an increase in stimulus payments. The legislation will need a simple majority in the Senate to be approved. On the other hand, the vote to override the presidential veto of the defense bill will require a special two-thirds majority. However, the bill is expected to pass through the Senate given that it has strong bipartisan support and had previously also crossed the veto-proof threshold. We now go to Uganda where presidential candidate Bobby Wine has announced that his bodyguard Francis Senteza was deliberately run over and killed. The incident took place on December 27th, that Sunday, after security forces used tear gas to disperse a rally held by Wine in central Uganda. Senteza was run over by a military truck while he was trying to take an injured journalist to the hospital. The journalist, Ashraf Kasire, was hit by a tear gas canister and is reported to be in a critical condition. This is the third attack on Wine and his campaign since he filed, for nomination, filed his nomination for the president's post on November 3rd. He has alleged repeated harassment and threats to his life by Ugandan security forces. He was also previously arrested on November 18th, which had sparked widespread protests in different parts of the country. Police and military officers reportedly used high-caliber rifles to suppress the protests, leading to the deaths of nearly 25 people. Ugandan officials have claimed that Wine has violated COVID-19 regulations against public gathering. However, activists state that this is merely a way of preventing opposition candidates from campaigning. Bobby Wine is challenging long-time president Yoweri Museveni in the upcoming election on January 14th. Museveni is the leader of the National Resistance Movement and has been power since 19, in power since 1986. For a final story, we take a look at the mass mobilizations against racism and police brutality that took place across the world this year. Here's a video feature on the defining moments of the fight against racial injustice in 2020. George Floyd, the name and the face have become synonymous with anti-racism movements across the US and the world. His murder in Minneapolis, Minnesota by racist police officials sparked the largest uprising against racism ever in the US, which soon spilled across the nation's borders. Even a deadly, 
highly contagious virus did not deter people from coming out onto the streets in anger. And on these streets, they were met with more violence from the state forces and from racist groups of people. George Floyd was one of the many such victims of racist violence in the U.S. The U.S. was not the only country where such racist attacks took place. As far-right forces are gaining power in different regions, racism is finding courage to rear its ugly head again. Humanity, as a result, is regressing instead of moving forwards. But the masses are pushing back. Despite the pandemic, people and movements across the world rose up, time and again, united against racism. They rose up for the rights of black people, indigenous people, immigrants, different ethnicities and nationalities. They stood up against the continuing apartheid-like conditions in Palestine. They are fighting against the idea that someone's race, color of skin, place of birth, or any such factor beyond anyone's control can in any way make them inferior or less worthy of an equal life. The people are united in their belief and in their demand for equality. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,